This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. An elderly male patient with the pseudo exfoliation moderately dilating pupil and the more problematic issue here is the presence of phacodenosis and this is a cause for concern and patient also has an underlying mature dense cataract so this is a difficult case and these are the challenges which i am thinking about now first i need to take care of the moderately dilating pupil i don't want any intraoperative myosis point number 2 which is of a much more serious concern is the generalized zonular laxity and this is going to be a challenge to manage the nucleus with such a severe zonular weakness and to add on to the misery we have a, a nucleus which is fairly dense so i'm just writing down my thought process as i'm planning surgery for this the first point obviously is to deal with the pupil uh, do i use a bhex device or do i use iris hooks the advantage of iris hooks is that it gives extremely well dilatation but i need to make four more openings the advantage of the b x ring is it's much more quicker but the limitation is that i'm not going to get an extraordinary pupillary dilatation but in this case i decided to go in with the b x device itself and if need be i may resort to iris hooks later on the next issue is to dealing with the zonules do i use capsulox in this patient and of course this patient does require a ctr and when i'm going to use the ctr point number 3 would be Now how do we divide this nucleus in this very hard cataract i need to have solid strategies to deal with this and lastly the point is how do i fix the iol so in this situation my primary goal is to use the iol trap technique wherein a multi piece lens is placed in the sulcus with the optics pushed behind the rexus margin causing the optic capture in the event where i am unable to salvage the bag i'll be resorting to the iris claw lens and that's the reason i am planning a scleral incision so that i can manage to place the rigid pmma iris clip lens if the need arises so the scleral tunnel incision is performed the capsule is already stained bx device is pushed in place now is the time to perform the rexus as i touch the capsule with the 26 number bent needle well i'm not surprised the lens is extremely wobbly and obviously the bag is quite loose so it is confirmatory of the presence of extremely loose zonules in eyes with these loose zonules i always prefer to go back to my forceps to grasp the flap and then begin tearing so forceps adds a great value in these scenarios goal is to perform at least 5.5 mm rexus and not less than this because i'm going to deal with a dense nucleus and it's always easier and safer to have a big rexus but of course i don't want too large a rexus so that the optic capture might become difficult hydrodissection is probably the most important step in eyes with zonular weakness the first attempt is not so successful in breaking all the attachments we can see that as i'm decompressing and nudging the nucleus the bag also is moving the second attempt again decompress and again we can still see the bag moving and finally the third attempt and as i'm decompressing the bag and nudging the nucleus i can see that the bag is not moving along with the nucleus and now the cortico capsular adhesions are broken and the bag is free from its attachments in such situations my preference always is to go ahead and stabilize the bag with the ctr at the earliest i'm creating some space underneath the anterior capsule by using cohesive ovd and a standard sized 11 to 13 ctr is being threaded into the bag the terminal edge of the ctr is held with the micro forceps and gently guided under the rexus margin so now we have a 360 degrees equatorial support to the capsular bag ideally one can consider the using the capsule hooks as well to stabilize the bag but in situations where the pupillary dilatation is not extremely good in these situations i am a little bit skeptical of using the capsule hooks because the visualization is not great of the capsular edge and there's always a risk of tearing the anterior capsular margin edge especially in these hypermature 
long standing cataracts because the anterior capsule is a little flimsy so that is my argument of not using the capsular hooks in these situations in a young healthy patient with a localized subluxation definitely capsule hooks are relatively safer to use next is my strategy to divide the nucleus well among the all the options of using a direct chop or stop and chop or divide and conquer i have consciously used the divide and conquer technique just to ensure that the chopping and lateral separation maneuvers are less stressful to the back so if you can get a deep sculpt which essentially breaks the back bone of the cataract then dividing the nucleus into smaller fragments is going to be much more easier rather than trying to divide the dense cataract especially in these eyes with wobbly back one of the common misconceptions is that when you're trying to sculpt you are going to induce or worsen the zonular weakness but in this case i can demonstrate as i'm sculpting there is hardly any force which is embedded on the nucleus and the bag the left hand instrument is stabilizing the nucleus and the energy is melting the nucleus in front of it and we can see that there's hardly any evidence of stress on the capsular bag nor the zonules so it's the technique which we need to be mastering and this is what is going to help us in ensuring that we induce minimal stress while sculpting the advantage of the modern machines give the ability to cut very effectively without generating much of a heat energy that again is a distinct advantage of course which we have with the current generation of the machines So the four grooves are created the grooves are slightly wider i wish i had an a slightly narrower grooves but nevertheless i am able to divide this dense nucleus into four smaller quadrants and then each of these fragments are individually emulsified there is a lot of corneal wound hydration which is happening Uh, it is because of the longer corneal tunnel incision which has happened in this eye and that could have been avoided by making a slightly smaller corneal entry But nevertheless the nucleus emulsification is done successfully time to deal with the cortex there is very little cortex which is left over but carefully this whatever minimal cortex is left is then dealt with a time to implant the lens since i'm going to implant the haptics of the lens into the sulcus because we're planning an iol trap technique sodium hyaluronate is used to create some space behind the iris and above the anterior capsule and the distal haptic is gently maneuvered into the eye and as i'm trying to retract the pupil the b hex ring gets dislodged and one of the haptics has got stuck under the b hex ring So because the B hex ring is already dislodged I need to disengage and remove it first before dialing the lens otherwise it's going to get entangled more and then carefully disengage the haptic from the B hex ring and eventually the lens is just lifted up so I create some space by putting OVD behind the lens and above the lens and the B hex a device is explanted out once the ring is out now is time to maneuver the hydrophobic multipiece lens into the sulcus both the haptics are in the sulcus now ovd which is behind the lens is aspirated out and the optic of the lens is gently tapped behind so with the irrigation in my left hand i'm using a y hook to retract the pupil and just confirm that the optic is behind the rexus the ovalization of the rexus is not very well visualized here because the rexus size is slightly bigger in the area where i'm intending to have the optic capture but the nevertheless i confirm that the rexus is above the optic and the haptic is above the anterior lens capsule before closing i just want to confirm the absence of any vitreous prolapse that is transzonular migration using diluted trimsonacetate and there is done side ports are hydrated intracranial antibiotics are placed the conjunctival flap which was raised has been sealed with cautery and that's it the case is done this is the first day post op picture and we can see that the cone is clear and the amount of wound hydration which we had near the incision is decreased significantly to summarize i think most challenging cases can be dealt well if we spend a little time in planning it ahead so in this case we anticipated the problem with the pupil and also the generalized zonal laxity and ensured that the critical steps like rexus hydrodissection were were perfect and obviously i always prefer to insert the ctr much earlier and this adds great stability to the bag 
and the zonular laxity does not worsen as we are managing this dense nucleus. And of course, technique of nucleus division always is a choice with the surgeon. But uh, in these situations, in the recent times, I'm preferring to go back to the four quadrant technique. And you'll be surprised that sculpting, in fact, if you use the right technique, does not worsen zonal laxity. That was it. Thank you for watching and hope you found this helpful.